Hi and uh, welcome to another video. Um, in a previous video I showed you how to build a simple UI in Squareline Studio and export it to Arduino and a viewer sent me an email and suggested another program that's very similar that's a e e -E Studio. I think to just pronounce it Easy Studio where you can also build and export embedded user interfaces for example to the Arduino or to the ESP32 which I think is the more common use case and so I thought you know why not just go over this and show you the whole process from start to finish uh, especially for the Arduino because uh, I found it very tricky to actually find any documentation on how you can get the exported uh, UI to work on an Arduino I mean just displaying it is not that difficult but you will also have to implement a little bit so I think it it's worthwhile making this video and I hope it helps someone out there so um, you can download it for free it's, uh, it's actually an open source program so all you do is you just go to their github page and then you go to uh, releases to the newest one it, it's available for Mac and Linux and Windows so once you install it uh, you get greeted with the screen you just select LVGL for Arduino or LVGL with easy flow uh, I will not pick this one because uh, if you actually want to get flow to work on Arduino you will need an additional external library but I might actually look at this in a later video but for now let's just pick LVGL and it supports versions 8.3 and 9.0 but I found that 8.3 works a little better with the Arduino that I'm using and I'm just gonna call this I don't know, a simple counter, example, whatever. So the first thing that you should do before you even add anything is to click this little icon up there and you can just verify that you selected the right things. Uh, in my case, the display width is uh, 240 and the height is 320. And you can just save that and go back to main. And you have to repeat the same for this window. It at least shows you that it's out of bounds here. So width 240, height 320, perfect. Yeah, but this would just be a very simple app. I just want to demonstrate like the main features, uh, which I think the most useful things or the most um, common tasks most users would like to accomplish is to have you know transitions between screens. When you click a button, for example, I also would like to display values generated by the Arduino and just send them to the text label here. Actually, it's going to be this one. And finally, I also want to send values from the UI or actually make the Arduino react to changes in the UI. So like uh, button presses and I might want to increment a counter and then say just display that here. I mean, this, this button here will just take you to the settings screen, which let me just let me just build this real quick and then I can explain it. Uh, like before, it's uh, actually a good idea to give these proper meaningful names so that you can actually reference all these UI elements from your code and make it a little bit easier to find them. So in this case, it is the counter value label, and this is what will display the counter value as we increment it. And similar to uh, uh, Squareline Studio, this is actually, uh, I think this is just an LVGL thing. So you do not have uh, the text on the button, you have to assign a child element to it, which is a label. I think one cool thing, I'm not even sure whether Squareline Studio had that, but I, I, it must have. You can adjust um, the layout and for anyone working with CSS and HTML, this is pretty cool because you can just set this to flex. And this way it's super easy to actually center all these elements in. and I might do the same thing here but I might also not this is just fine if it's static there you go this is like the basic app so what you have here is you can just click on this button to go to the settings or at least that's what we want to do um, on the settings you have this active deactivated uh, toggle thing right and that will just activate or deactivate the the plus button that I forgot to add here anyway so what you can do with this or what I want to happen is if you like if this is deactivated then this 
button should not be clickable. And this is a good surrogate into the next topic here, which is uh, states. Right, I'm not going to go over all of this because I think I already explained it in the original videos um, where I used Squareline Studio. It's basically the same because it's just LVGL, but some elements have states, so actually all of them have states. Say like one of the states is disabled, it's the disabled state here, flags control stuff like hidden for example. So the button is just not visible in the UI. What you need to do is you need to add and remove flags to hide stuff and set or unset states, for example, disabled. But in this case, I will show you something pretty useful, which should actually just work out of the box. So what you have here is uh, variables. These are global variables, and you can just define some, like say, um, button disabled, and it's gonna be a Boolean. And we click OK. And as you can see here, the disabled can either be like a literal state, or you can assign it to a variable which is this button inactive. Let me just save this, go to the other thing. And here we have this toggle. And this again can be a variable. And if you assign it to the same thing, it, it doesn't change anything in the UI, but it will make it easier for us later on. Because all you need to do, uh, so the generated code will already have this. So this uh, relationship will already be present in the generated code. Another thing is uh, actions, which is a little bit hidden. You need to scroll right here and you see user actions, and these are needed for uh, switching between screens. And in this case, we'll just call this one switch to settings. And what this will do is later in the generated code, you will just have a function that will be called whenever you click this button. And I mean, you, you will have to implement this function yourself, and you will see how this all looks in the generated code later on. But uh, for actions, you can go to the uh, events here and we can add an event handler. And the handler is, pr uh, you know, whenever users press the settings button, it should call the action um, switch to settings. Then we go to the settings screen. We click this back button, event handler, and then we go to switch to main whenever pressed. Okay, good. And that should be it for the basic UI hope I didn't forget anything. Yeah, I think that should be it. So um, once you're done generating or building your UI here, uh, what you can do is click this little wrench icon here and it will just build your UI, which means it generates uh, the code files and here are the generated code files. And you know, this is what you're left with. And uh, unfortunately there is no documentation or at least I couldn't find any on what you need to do with this. If you just copy this over to the Arduino, this just won't work because it, there is nothing that it can do with it. Which means that before you can upload it to an Arduino and end up with like a functional embedded UI, you'll have to take a couple of steps. But um, I think I'll cap this video here and instead make this into a two-part series, uh, just so that the individual videos don't get too long and that you can just reference whichever part is more relevant to you. Yeah, with that, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, keep an eye out for the second video where I actually show you what you need to do to upload the generated code to the Arduino. In that second part, in the second video, we'll also implement all the remaining functions so that users can actually click the buttons and interact with the UI elements. Yeah, with that said, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching and bye.